my name is Shelby. I'm one of the coordinators here at Momentum, and I'm here with RJ. Hello. RJ is one of our senior high boy leaders. Uh, RJ, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, I'm RJ. Um, I'm in the Air Force. I got here last April. Uh, I like baking, lifting heavy things, and riding motorcycles. <laughs> I love how the baking goes with It's definitely the most important, though. So that's why it was first. <laughs> yes. If you don't know RJ, RJ is a phenomenal baker. Like, literally, well, he brings cakes and all kinds of desserts every Wednesday <laughs> when we're in the building. He actually got made fun of for not bringing a dessert today. I was unjustly shamed for not bringing <laughs> anything today. Uh, but seriously, if you have baking needs... Hit up RJ. It's definitely a, a good Always thing. Always happy to do it. <laughs> uh, but so you've been in Minot for a year. Yep. What? Came from Japan. Japan. Okay. And you're originally from California, right? Northern California, born and raised. So what surprised you the most about Minot? There's a lot of apartment complexes for a relatively small town. Like there doesn't need to be that. We have plenty of room. Have you looked around? There's nothing there. Let's build more houses. That is an interesting observation, but you're right. There are hotels. Well, hotels, that's what I thought of when you said that, but apartments too. Everywhere you look. A lot of apartments. So let us know, actually, that's a great segue. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Are you in a house or are you in an apartment? I know we have a pretty good mix of both. Um, yeah, Judah and I have moved five times since coming to Minot and half of those were apartments and the other half were houses. So yeah, let us know if you are in one of those apartment complexes. <laughs> RJ, do you live in a house? I recently bought a house. Yeah. Um, so that way I, my dog could have his own fenced in yard. That was a priority for me. So now yeah. he's happy. He's outside of it right now because he's a husky and this isn't too cold for him. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Winter just doesn't want to end, does it? No, I dragged out my bike last weekend and it's sitting on uh, my back porch and it's just making me sad because it's it's been cold ever since that one ride I took. <laughs> but forecast is saying 60 degrees this weekend, so I'm just praying that that sticks because it is the middle of April, April 15th. I just, I cannot believe that. Okay, so RJ, uh, we have... I mean, this is a weird season that we're in. So hopefully we have a few new students checking us out for the first time online. Maybe they've never made it to a Momentum service. What would you want them to know about Momentum? Uh, just be willing to come up to any one of the leaders. We'd love to talk with you. Don't just be sitting off by yourself. Sometimes it's hard to get uh, in contact with everyone. Mm -hmm. But if you see someone walking around in a leader shirt, Come up to us. We'll get you plugged in. We'll make you not feel like you're out there by yourself. That's awesome. I love how you say that. Yeah, I definitely think that's the hard thing about going to a new place and meeting new people. And now we're in this really weird online platform. And so I just want to encourage you that if you are new, we're going to do small groups afterwards in a Zoom call. And the link is in the description. If you're in junior high, there's one link. If you're in senior high, there's another. Um, but that's your way to get connected to us and to plug in. And I know, especially maybe in that online format it's really weird and awkward but hey let's be honest we're all... weird and awkward is sometimes <laughs> the most fun so yeah. you come into the senior high boys we're gonna joke around there's gonna be really weird cameras uh, angles most people from the bottom up for some reason because they can't just rest it on something it's a great time <laughs> yeah so just come have fun and just come join us i think it would be really great uh so let's see. Sorry, I have to check my notes. Otherwise, I just can't remember things these days. Uh, what advice do you have for students during these times? I mean, weird season. We're meeting online for momentum. We're doing online school. We don't really know what the future holds. So what would you share with students? Uh, if you're one of the people persons that love to interact with folk, uh, figure out ways to make it work with technology and things like that. Don't don't just be depressed and secluded. Um, and if you're like me, who loves being alone and reading, just enjoy this time to kind of, you know, <laughs> sit and bask in uh, your books and your uh, internet and all that stuff. So, and uh, also if you're uh, more introverted, still get out and, you know, encourage your extroverted friends because they are hurting and they need your help. Yeah, that is a great reminder. I was talking to one of our leaders, Alfred. Hey, Alfred, I know you're watching. Uh, and Alfred is super extroverted. Anyone who knows Alfred knows that he is a people person. and He, he, he wants to be there. He wants to talk with yeah, you. Yeah, 
And I'm sure he's loading our comments right now, <laughs> which I love. Uh, but yeah, I was encouraging him too, because, you know, we just forget to be intentional sometimes, especially when you have a lot of monotony right now. Like your days probably look the same. You get up, you do the same stuff. Uh, and so just making the time to connect with people and it doesn't have to be fancy. It just needs to be a text message. Hey, how's it going? Um, and I'm notoriously bad at, I, think of texting people and then I just don't do it. So if you need to set an alarm on your phone, make reminders, Yep, it can work, but that's great advice. And then finally, RJ, what's been encouraging you these days? How have you been getting through? Well, like I said, I'm introverted. So this has actually been kind of like a vacation for me. Uh, <laughs> I've been reading lots of books, playing video games, playing with my dog. It's, it's, it's been great. So yeah. I don't, don't have like one thing holding me through. <laughs> just been just been a fun time that's <laughs> awesome yes i think we just all are kind of finding our rhythms and what works for us i know for me like getting outside has helped and so that's why the snap of cold weather and snow was kind of disappointing but now that we have sunshine come in just going for walks with jonathan and whatnot so that is awesome uh, we just want to encourage you if you need prayer during this season which let's be honest all of us need prayer all the time but if there's just something specific we can be lifting you up in uh, please message our facebook page our instagram you can send an email to the pursuit uh, reach out to your small group leader during the chat afterwards uh, we just we would love to encourage you during this time and if you are struggling, like, please, we are here to help. And so, like I said earlier, join that Zoom call. You're going to see RJ on the senior high call. Uh, we have leaders for all age groups. So whether you're a sixth grader or a 12th grader, boy or girl, we have someone for you. Uh, and yeah, I think we are ready to start our message. So I am going to go ahead and pray. And then we'll see what Big Mike has for us today. Let's do this. Dear Lord, I just thank you for Wednesday nights and just this opportunity for us to meet with technology, Lord. And uh, I know it's uncertain and we really don't know what tomorrow holds for us, but you tell us just to focus on today. And so I pray that we can find rest in that. I pray that no matter what our struggles are, whether uh, we're enjoying the alone time, whether it's driving us crazy, if we're surrounded by family, if we're by ourselves right now, Lord, just that you would come in and meet us and that we could uh, seek your face and just spend some time with you every day and just find that peace that you have to offer us, Lord. I just pray for the message today uh, and just this uh, sermon series going through Ephesians, uh, Lord, and just that you would be with us in our small groups afterwards and that we would be uh, brave enough to show up and uh, to get on the call and just be around fellow people for just a little bit, Lord. Uh, we love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Good evening, Momentum. I hope you're having a great evening. So excited to be with you tonight. Um, my name's Mike. If I haven't met you before, I'm one of the pastors here. Um, just thankful that you're joining us tonight, uh, wherever you're joining us from, in your home or at a friend's or I don't know, wherever you're at. So excited. Um, I have a couple of friends here with me tonight um, that we're going to have a little discussion. Su super excited to have them on stage, some solid dudes um, that I know. And we're going to just talk a little bit um, for about 15 minutes. And I think, I think through this time that we get together, we're actually going to grow in our relationship with God because we're going to understand more about what His Word means for our life. And so I think that's really cool. Um, if you are just joining us for the first time, we are jumping into a series um, called Countercultural countercultural. And this whole series is really based on this idea that we all have unique gifts as individuals, something that's not new to many of us, that we all have different gifts, um, passions that um, are unique to our own self. Um, but how do we use those gifts for God's glory? How do we use those gifts to share love with other people? Sometimes it's hard for us to do that, right? It's hard for us to love people because it, it just doesn't seem like that's what the people around us in our culture do. And so we're really talking about these gifts um, throughout this series and how that can be that we um, are countercultural when we use our gifts. And so I have some friends here tonight that I know and I've done life with for a while. Um, I'd like to introduce them. Um, my buddy Jaden here. Jaden, do you want to tell us something about yourself? I like to play sports, and basketball is one of my favorite sports I like to play. Jaden is, is a baller. He's awesome, dude. If you don't know him, get to know him. He's a seventh grader. Um, I have my other buddy up here tonight, uh, Sammy. Sammy, tell us something about yourself. Uh, let's see. I own a shop here in town. Um, work on people's cars. I love working on cars. Um, that's just a gift that God's given me that I've been able to um, express to others. 
Totally. Sammy's an awesome dude too. And the cool thing about both of these guys is I, I know them well enough to know that they both have gifts, right? Sammy's a great listener. Sammy is really good at listening to people and, and caring for them. Um, Jaden here has a big heart. He just wants to serve people, right? He's been on mission trips. Um, he goes out of his way to help people. And these unique gifts each of these guys have um, can really share God's love with the world around them. And I think it's been so cool for me to watch that. And so we're going to talk more about that tonight as we get into it. So our discussion we're really going to focus on tonight, so catch this, is um, how God has equipped each of us with special gifts. So each one of us has specific special gifts to offer. And so we're going to really um, center our conversation around that tonight. Um, Something that's fun that we're going to do is we're using the SOAP method. Um, And I don't know if many of you guys have heard that. If you've been around, you've heard that. But the SOAP method is just a way of looking at Scripture, looking at the Bible, and evaluating it, trying to understand what it means. Because I know many of us reading Scripture can be challenging because it's, you know, it's hard to know what's going on sometimes. But um, SOAP is actually an acronym. Sammy, do you want to tell us what the letters of SOAP stand for? Yeah, so it's uh, Scripture, Observe, Apply, and Pray. You got it. Um, (laughs) So read your scripture um, and, you know, what stands out to you in the observation part of it. Uh, You can read the same scripture and multiple times it can have different meanings to you throughout your life. Um, You know, and you can apply it to your life and then just pray about how to apply that to your life. That's awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Very simple way for us. If you don't use the SOAP method um, currently to observe scripture, I would encourage you to do it. It's just a really helpful way to get the most out of what you're reading. Um, And so last week, Andy was here and he talked about uh, a couple of verses in the book of Ephesians, which we're looking at chapter four uh, specifically. He looked at verses one through six and how uh, he taught us how we're supposed to live a God-sized life. We're supposed to set examples and we're supposed to be unified. And so we're continuing on with that discussion. We're looking at verses seven through 10. So we're really taking a passage of scripture and trying to learn more. What does that mean for us? So tonight we're looking at seven through 10. We're going to break it into two parts in our discussion. The first part, um, we're looking at verse seven. And I have my, my buddy Jaden here is going to read the scripture and then um, apply the soap method to it. So Jaden, would you read um, the first part for us? Ephesians 4, 7. However, he has given each each one of us a special gift through the generosity of Christ. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, it's a a great verse, right? Really encouraging verse. And so um, when you look at that, if we were to apply the SOAP method, um, Jaden, if you were to like look at that first part and you say, well, what do I observe? What, what stands out to me in that um, verse? What would you say that stands out to you? What do you observe in that verse? Uh, I observe that God has given, a, has given us each one unique gift to help build his kingdom in the church. And that's what stands out to me the most. No, I think that's, that's a really powerful thing, you know. Sometimes we don't recognize where our gifts come from, but that's really cool. Um, and so... If we, you, you understand that we have been given gifts and that Jesus gave us these gifts, it says through the generosity of Christ, through Jesus, we have these gifts, right? Um, we get that. But what does this even mean for us? How do we apply this? What would you say to that? How do you apply this to your own life? Um, I apply it to like, say a sports team or something like the church. We are all a team and each of us is given um, special gifts to help carry out what a church is. And same with the basketball team. You have to have gifts and you have to have chemistry to win games. And a church is just like that. We can worship together. And yeah, special that's awesome, gifts. dude. No, I think that hits it right on the head. Like we all have our part to play, right? And, and I think that's really important for us to remember because sometimes we want what other people have. We want their gifts or we compare ourselves but really God's saying, hey, no, I think you have a specific gift I want you to use that's not like everybody around you. So I think that's really cool. Um, so if we move on, we've done the observation, we've applied it. Now, really this whole prayer part of it, like what does that mean? Well, really when we look at God's word and we want to pray about it, like it would become a reality in our own life. If you look at this passage, Jaden, what would you pray about or how would you pray um, about this passage for you? Uh, I'd pray that God can show me what my gift is that I can help build his kingdom in, and he can show me that through prayer. 
Absolutely. That's, that's really cool. Yeah, I mean, for us, it's so hard to understand what our gifts are, um, but that's what God does is he just elevates those things in a way that we would never know if we didn't talk to him about it. Um, and, and, and we can also talk to other, you know, Christian friends, leaders, people that we trust that know God. Um, so that's a cool thing too. So let's move on to the second part of our um, passage tonight. Um, we're looking at verses uh, 8 through 10 in chapter 4. And so, Sammy, would you read those verses for us um, in chapter 4? And then we'll talk about, you know, what you observe in that. <clears throat> yeah, for sure. Uh, Ephesians 4, 8 through 10, that is why scriptures say, when he ascended to the heights, he led a crowd of captives and gave, his, gave gifts to his people. Notice that it says he ascended. That this clearly means that Christ also descended to our lowly world. And the same one who descended is the one who ascended higher than all the heavens so that he might fill the entire universe with himself. Boom. That's what's up. Yeah, that's a lot in there, right? Yeah. That's a good passage too. It's very encouraging. Um, and it kind of reiterates what we learned in verse 7, right? Um, but if you were to, you know, just to pick, you know, maybe one or two things that you observe in those two verses, what would you say jumps out to you? What do you observe? Say that Jesus gave us gifts and he, um, and he came down to this earth for us? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's really good for us to remind ourselves that, you know, Jesus was proof and he came to really emphasize that, hey, I have a plan for each of us. And that means that I'm going to give you gifts. I'm going to give you things, ac actions, um, opportunities to love people where they're at and, um, that's really cool and really encouraging for us that God would do that. He would come down from heaven, a holy God, and love us in that way. So, and, you know, now what does that mean for you? Um, that, you know, you know that Jesus has given you gifts. You know that he came for you to give you these gifts. Uh, how do you apply that to your life? Or how would you apply that? I think if we can just look at um, the gifts that he's given us or, or search uh, for the gift, um, then we can look at that and say that he has empowered us to be able to advance his kingdom, as Jaden said. Yeah, yeah, it can be an encouragement in those times when we are discouraged, like, hey, I don't really have anything that I can offer anybody. You know, I wish I had that gift, or I wish I had that gift. Um, but this could be just a reminder in those maybe, you know, tougher days, I guess you would say, that God really does want something for each of us, and he wants each of us to use those gifts to build the whole body. And like Jaden said earlier, to be a team. And I think that's really, really good picture for us. And so um, if you were to pray about this passage, how would you pray about this? Well, that's a tough one. <laughs> um, let's see. Praying as a 30-year-old would be different than praying as a middle schooler or a high schooler. <laughs> yeah. About it. Um, but for me, where I am in my life, it'd be just to, um, to ask God to continue to give me a, a heart to do, um, you know, like I said, working on cars is a passion of mine, a gift that he gave me, um, you know, so to, to impact as many people as I can, um, but you get beat up sometimes, and so, you know, to, to just ask him to empower me, to encourage me uh, to continue that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, I think we can go back to God's word and it can always be an encouragement to us. And so, um, yeah, a really fun, quick way for us to like discuss some of the scripture we talked about um, that we're going through this series. Um, and so the two things that we learned tonight that each of us has special gifts, right? Every one of us has things that we can offer the world around us. And really, Jesus, he, he came and he empowered us, you know, to use those gifts. That's the other thing we learned, right? We just need to be confident in that. And so when we aren't confident, we need to talk to people. We need to talk to God about um, becoming confident and using those gifts. And so I want to challenge you guys tonight, um, those of you that are watching, um, to start identifying your gifts and start practicing your gifts this week. Pray to God that he would give you um, guidance to use your gifts um, and just to um, shine love to people right now because you know our world needs it, right? And so I would challenge you to use the SOAP method as well when you read scripture. Go back to this passage and uh, use the SOAP method when you read it and see what God reveals to you. So with that, would we close things out? Sammy, would you pray for us um, as we close things out for tonight? Yeah, for sure. Um, and everybody tuning in, um, just go ahead and you know, bow your heads, close your eyes, and, uh, and pray with me. Um, Heavenly Father, we thank you uh, for momentum. We thank you for Mike and Jaden um, giving us the opportunity just to um, to spread your word. Uh, we ask that, that you can just search our hearts and reveal to us um, what our gifts are and, and show us how we can apply those gifts to advance your kingdom. It's in your name we pray. Amen.
Amen. Thank you, Sammy. And now is the time, if you guys are um, in a small group, to click on the Zoom link below for junior high or senior high, and you will go to your small group. Have a great night.